Do you want a holiday card from DTNS? Become a patron and give us your address by November 15th, and we'll send you a special DTNS holiday card. If you're a patron already, check if we've got your address by going to patreon.com slash pledges. Coming up on DTNS, NVIDIA wants to make NPCs for the metaverse, commercial autonomous taxis set to launch in Las Vegas, and the next combatant against Google in the search engine wars is you.com. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, November 9th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. Sarah Lane will be back soon, folks. She's doing great. Uh, but we have Patrick Norton, host of AVXL, with us today. How's it going, Patrick? I am endeavoring mightily to be worthy of being here when Sarah's not. Ah, and 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 right you are. You you are endeavoring and succeeding, may I say. Oh. Uh we have a, a long version of a show where I have a very failed bit to talk about rolly luggage. Uh, good day, Internet. That's available at patreon.com slash DTNS. Big thanks to our patrons that make this possible, including top patrons like Dan Kolbeck, Jeffrey Zilks, and Tony Glass. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Microsoft announced the 11.6-inch Surface Laptop SE meant for the classroom. Uh, it's $250 available to schools later this year. Hardware has the same solid keyboard as other Surface models, a 1366 by 768 display, so better than 1080. Uh, everything is built for easy repairability, so your IT department at your school can fix it. Also runs Windows 11 SE. That is a modified version of Windows that's meant to be easy to deploy and manage remotely, so you can deploy to all the students' laptops. Only IT admins can add and remove apps, for instance. Uh, 365 apps and OneDrive work offline, so if the student doesn't have a connection, uh, they can keep using the laptop, and it'll sync when a connection is available. Devices from non-Microsoft vendors that use Windows 11 SE are also on the way. It's fascinating. Mm. Take that, Chrome. Right <laughs> Take that. Friday on DTNS, we mentioned that iFixit's confirmation that Face ID would stop working after a screen replacement unless you had access to Apple systems or one of its repair programs, or you did some micro soldering to move the microcontroller from the old screen to the new one. Tuesday, Apple told The Verge it will release a software update that will not require you to do micro soldering to move the microcontroller if you want to keep Face ID working after a screen replacement. Woo! Apple did not give a date on when that software update would arrive. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> uh, Samsung announced a new bit of RAM for your mobile devices that works a 1.3 times faster and uses 20% less power than the desktop version. LPDDR5X RAM has a capacity of up to 16 gigabytes, package capacity of 64 gigabytes, with data transfer speeds of 8.5 gigabits per second. Samsung says that it tends to market it to automobile, edge server apps, augmented reality, and Patrick will be very upset if I don't mention that their press release mentioned the metaverse as well, whenever that happens. And artificial intelligence. <laughs> oh, right, AI. Also blockchain, I guess. I don't know. It wasn't in the press release. Don't but forget it. What about NFTs? Oh, and NFTs. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Netflix announced its five mobile games will launch on iOS Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific. It launched them for Android last week. The games will appear listed in a game show in the iOS Netflix app. Like on the Android, the games download as separate apps. You log in with your Netflix ID to play them at no additional charge. And Twitter's subscription service has expanded from Canada and Australia to New Zealand and the U.S. as of Tuesday. The $2.99 a month service gives you an undo button for your tweets, a reader mode for tweet threads, bookmarks folder, some theme options. You can also join the Labs program and try out Twitter features before they launch to all users. And with this expansion, Twitter Blue, uh, for every user that can get it, uh, added ad-free articles. It lets you read some partner news stories without ads. Uh, they'll be labeled oh, wow. as such. Uh, there's also a top article section for the most shared links from people you follow on Twitter. And on the iOS version of the app, you'll be able to customize your navigation a little bit. All right, let's nice. talk about autonomous cars. Aptive Hyundai's joint venture called Motional is teaming up with Lyft to launch autonomous taxi service in Las Vegas, Nevada in 2023. Last That's November... Easy. Nevada gave Motional approval to test autonomous vehicles without human safety drivers. That's the big advance here. There's all kinds of tests of 
the with with the safety drivers behind sure. the wheel. Uh, they've got approval to do it without. So select passengers in Las Vegas will be able to book rides in Motional's driverless Hyundai Ionics by the end of next year as a test. Uh, they'll be using this to collect rider feedback on things like the process and the interface and fine tuning how you get in and out of the car, that sort of things. You won't be charged uh, as part of that. Full scale offering and the right to charge for autonomous taxi rides is expected to come in 2023. Motional is also planning to test on public roads in Los Angeles soon. And of course, they're not That's the only here. one. Uh, Waymo already offers limited commercial service in Phoenix, Arizona. They've been doing that since 2018. GM's Cruise launched autonomous taxi service in San Francisco for its employees and some select public passengers and has applied there for permission to offer its ride hailing services for a charge. Uh, so creeping, creeping slowly towards actual commercial services, Patrick. Slouching towards autonomous vehicular <laughs> As activities. Joe Didion so famously wrote, yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I got to say, I, I, I blurted it out mid-read, but I, I admire anybody that's willing to, you know, launch autonomous vehicles in Las Vegas, followed up by Los Angeles. Now all I need to do is like get Lower Manhattan in there, and, right? Uh, yeah, or Midtown Manhattan. It's and the Upper Peninsula the of day. Michigan, just to you know have a snow <laughs> test, right? Oh, that would be good. Yeah. I like that idea. No, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes. I hope it goes well for them. I hope someday to see autonomous vehicles that are actually autonomous. Yeah. I mean, to me, the, the, the big debate out there is, is, you know, when, when will we get human free autonomous taxi service? Will sure. it be soon or will it be, you know, Oh, that's 2070. That's, that's 50 years down the road. Uh, and, Nobody, nobody really knows, but this is at least one more, you know, on on the pile to say we think we can do it soon. We'll see if they actually hit their date. For me, like I don't, I don't want any taxi drivers. I don't want anybody, you know, Lyft or Uber drivers to lose the opportunity to make money. Really, I just want this stuff to actually be proven so that I can buy a truck and like have it do the boring 800 miles, or so that I can read a book and you know look at the amazing things out in Utah until it's time to get on the dirt and get, you know, busy. Yeah, no, truck. absolutely. I mean, there, there are times and maybe there's, maybe there will be an artisanal taxi service that's driven by humans as, as a, as a perk in the future. There are times when I enjoy talking to the taxi driver. I absolutely yeah. do. There are other times when I'm like, you know what? I'm not in the mood. I don't want to talk to anybody and I'll want right. that autonomous car that doesn't have anybody else in it. So, yeah. Uh, in September, Qualcomm closed its acquisition of AR developer toolmaker Wikitude. And Ooh. as of Tuesday, Qualcomm has announced a platform called Snapdragon Spaces, uh, taking advantage of some of the talent they got when they acquired Wikitude to help developers create apps for augmented reality. The idea is to make it easier to make software to pair a phone with glasses or a headset. So both the apps that'll work on that, but also you know the communication that happens. The kit includes support for Unreal Engine 4, Unity, OpenXR, Niantic's just announced Lightship platform, and Unity's AR Foundation. There's also object recognition, tracking, scene recognition, spatial mapping, a lot of stuff you'd expect. Uh, gesture and hand tracking tools are coming along with their recently acquired HINS subsidiary Clay Air. Snapdragon Spaces is also available to partners, or starting only available to partners, Trip, Scope AR, Felix and Paul Studios, Lenovo, Oppo, Xiaomi, T-Mobile, and NTT Docomo all have access. Wider availability for everybody, though, is expected next year to kind of open it up, get more developers on the platform. Lenovo will be the first to launch a product built with spaces called the Think Reality A3 Glasses uh, with one of their Motorola phones. They haven't said which. The upshot is Qualcomm is trying to make it easier to develop software that runs on headsets connected to Android phones that run on Qualcomm chips. So you might. Because of this, see a lot more AR headsets and apps next year. Maybe at CES even. While you're riding in your driverless taxi, I'm in. Yeah, because <laughs> you'll be able to pop those AR glasses on because the taxi's driving itself. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are waiting for AR devices that are worth getting. Uh, you know, like on the one end, we've got the Wayfarer glasses uh, that Meta is working with Ray-Ban to make. Right. Uh, the what are, what are they called? The Stories, uh, the the Ray-Ban Stories. Those aren't really AR though. Those are just a fancy camera put in glasses that look normal. Uh, on the <laughs> other end, you've got like the Hololens, and that just hasn't turned into anything but an enterprise uh, level device. So, I'm kind of waiting for that that middle device to finally get there. And I guess Qualcomm's trying to help make that happen. 
I've, I feel like I've literally was having the same AR demo for like 15 years where it was some sort of single or double lens. And essentially I was looking at airplane manuals because Boeing was, was the test case for everybody, right? Cause you're climbing up into a plane and it's, you know, the manuals are way over there. And if we can put the manuals on the mechanics face, it's easier or the, you know, the technician's face. Mm. And then you know, it was, you know, and then finally Microsoft did some interesting stuff where they were one of the first times they ever got to do a, a really impressive architectural walkthrough with the AR glasses. But it's also, you know, this is one of those things that, you know, it's, it gets a little closer, it gets a little closer. Um, you know, I don't think Magic Leap helped out a lot of people with their sort of super hype and then collapse. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what ends up being the actual real world use for it or what breaks it loose for the most people. Um, I, I actually take uh, take heart from a, from a big major platform like this uh, because... Yeah. Qualcomm doesn't do this unless they think this increases the number of chips it'll sell. And they don't think it'll sure. significantly increase the number of chips it's going to sell unless they think some viable products will come out of it. So hopefully there will be. Slouching towards. <laughs> We're slouching towards, <laughs> slouching towards everything. How about slouching towards uh, search engine competition? Uh, more than one of you has written into us at one point or another asking why nobody has launched a competing search engine to Google. Uh, some of you probably assume that's because Google is a monopoly and Bing has showed us it cannot be competed with and DuckDuckGo just has people like me using it exclusively on mobile but hasn't increased its market share. Well, get ready for another test case, folks. A former chief scientist from Salesforce named Richard Socher is part of a team that founded you.com, Y-O-U.com, a search engine that is now out of public beta. Or I'm sorry, it's now out in public beta. The design is card-based. You don't have a, a row. You don't have that Google Alta Vista, you know, time immemorial list. You've got little little widgets, uh, little cards, uh, and the cards are collected in relevant categories. So I did a search for Korean fried chicken early today. I got a Wikipedia article at the top, followed by a row of recipes. Under that, two rows of web results. I kept scrolling, and I had a row for Reddit, and a row for quick facts. Uh, other searches will get you results from different things. Patrick did Korean fried chicken near me and got Yelp at the top. Uh, you might also get Medium or something like that. Users can customize what sh rows show up. If you create an account and log in, you can make some more important or choose not to use certain sources at all if you're like, I never want to see from that source. Also has sections for web images, video, news, and map, although the map just kicks you out to Google Maps. Uh, video searches let you play the videos without having to open a new tab. You can just click on it and it'll play right on the page you're on. Uh, searches for code let you see the code snippets and copy them without leaving the page. They say they really are trying to target developers with that feature. Has a private mode that includes hiding your IP address and the company promises it will never sell your data to third parties. There is no monetization yet. Though Socher told TechCrunch there will probably be ads at some point, but he reiterated those will only be related to the query you're making at the time. They, they don't plan to do ad targeting. You search for Korean fried chicken, they might show you ads for Korean fried chicken places, but that's it. Uh, I don't know what to make of this. Uh, we were chatting about this on Good Day Internet, Patrick. I don't know if it's good, but it's certainly fascinating, the different approach here. It's such a bizarre business to go into. I, like, you know, oh, I'm going to climb Everest, you know. Uh, it's it's just it's it, you know what I mean they, like this is such a huge windmill to tilt at I also thought yeah, it was yeah. really funny because when you look at DuckDuckGo it's a very old school experience in the sense that you have a bunch of links and if you want to see the majority of the information you click on that link and it launches in a new web page and you know it has been fascinating for me to think about how much Google has inserted itself in there. Like, you know, I click on a link, but it's not actually the page. It's Google presenting me the page with a link to a Google link instead of a link to the web page that I want to share with my friend. And it's, it's uh, you know, you is a little closer to that Google model than it is to the DuckDuckGo model. Um, you know, so I, I have sort of a classic animal I search for, and it's fun to look at something that is, you know, so non, you know, I mean, the, the, the definite, the information on, on most animals doesn't change a whole lot over time. And it makes it really interesting way for me to preview how a website approaches things. And you.com is definitely doing that Google thing where they suck up a whole lot of information from pages and present it to you so that you never have to leave your search engine. You yeah. never 
leave. <laughs> but I, I also like that uh, in, in, in certain, certain cases, right? I want to be able right. to do it. And and to your point, if I click on the any of the Korean fried chicken recipes, I get the link to the recipe. I don't get that yes. weird Google link uh, that I have to click through to get the actual link. So they're, they're not totally down that Google road. No. Um, also, I have questions if this were to scale. Okay, but who gets to partner with you? Because I see archive.org, uh, A-R-X-I-V, not, not the library. Right. Uh, I, see, um, uh, I see Yelp. Okay, that's probably fine. I see news. Well, what's news? Music. Who's your music provider? I see dictionary. <laughs> who's the dictionary provider? I see Walmart. What's your deal with Walmart? Do you have a special deal? Are yeah. you going to prioritize their results any? Like, lots of questions when you start categorizing how you determine your categories. I'm not saying it's yes. bad to categorize, but... You know, proof's in the pudding there. Maybe you'll be able to choose your preferred provider of dictionary services. Yeah, that would be <laughs> nice. If you could customize all that stuff, that'd be really cool. Uh, folks, if you have a thought about you.com or anything else, give us an email. Oh, you don't know our email address? Well, it's feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And uh, if you forget, just email me and I'll tell you. <laughs> NVIDIA announced lots of wow tech at their GPU technology conference. Let's take a look at some of the big announcements. What fun would a potential metaverse be without fully autonomous interactive AI avatars? In other words, the NPCs of the metaverse. Enter NVIDIA Omniverse, launching out of beta into general availability. Omniverse is a collaboration tool for graphic designers and engineers to create realistic simulated people. Uh, particularly notable is the NVIDIA Omniverse avatar capability, which combines speech synthesis, computer vision, natural language understanding, recommendation engines, and similar tech. Uh, and yeah, computer vision means this thing can look you in the eye. Let's say you're doing a restaurant kiosk. It can look at you because it knows where you are. Let's you create ray-traced 3D characters that you can have a conversation with. Uh, they can be used to do things like take orders at a restaurant or banking transactions, book your dental appointment. Stuff like that. They do have a two-second lag time right now, uh, which is a little annoying. Uh, integration with Cloud XR lets you stream to augmented reality and virtual reality devices. And if you're not a developer, NVIDIA has opened the Omniverse showroom in open beta that lets you just go in and play with a few demos. You can talk to some avatars. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a cool demo, Patrick, right? Is it anything but that? Uh, part of me was having recently read having recently read Ready Player Two, uh, it was amusing to sort of see this, read this announcement, be like, this, this is where it starts. Mm. Um, and I'm kind of curious, uh, I'm kind of curious, you know, which way, you know, will the metaverse evolve to be a whole bunch of people, you know, donning gear, or will they be able to create bots that are fast enough and efficient enough to actually, because that two second lag time is just not going to make it a joyful experience. Um, yeah, I mean, um, their I, demo, the demo of the restaurant made the most sense to me, but also I was sure. like, I don't really want a thing talking to me, especially with a two-second lag. I just want to pick my menu items. Like, But I, I think there are <laughs> other situations where, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm going into an information kiosk and having a pretend-friendly face that can understand what I say and react to it could, could be useful. I don't know. Hi, Tom. Are you suffering from extreme dental pain, moderate <laughs> pain, or are you just here for a cleaning? No, I, I just want to know where gate 35 is. Why, why did I get the dental guy suddenly? We'll be sending cleaners to gate 35, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably how it'll work. Uh, another one, Reva <laughs> Custom Voice is a toolkit in NVIDIA's Reva Conversational AI Development Kit that can create custom human-like voices. This one feels like it's immediately practical. You only need 30 yeah. minutes of recorded speech data. Businesses and brands can use that then to develop virtual assistants and particularly call center phone trees. Uh, so you don't have to go back and re-record every time you change your phone tree. You just need 30 minutes of recorded speech data. You can customize on the fly. System would save on time and expense of recording all, all those words. Uses supervised, semi-supervised learning, meaning it needs just a small amount of labeled data to mark correlational points, and then it can make up its own new labels. That saves you time. Reva Custom Voice will launch in open beta at no cost. And early next year, they'll on launch Reva Enterprise, a fully managed version. Reva Custom Voice will compete with Google's WaveNet, Microsoft's Custom Neural Voices, and Amazon's Brand Voice. Uh, they're not the only ones doing it, but but it seems like a good one. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are going to do it, but NVIDIA is good at this sort of stuff. I was kind of shocked at how many people were actually doing that. Yeah. 
It's uh, I I think it's it's a thing where a lot of companies are like, man, recording. You know, you wonder like, why don't they update their phone tree, or why does it always say they've updated it, and it doesn't sound like they've updated it? It's, it takes time. <laughs> Uh, NVIDIA launched the Jetson AGX Orin Robot Brain, uh, a follow-up to the AGX Xavier. The Orin has six times the processing power in the same palm-sized form factor. Built on the Ampere architecture, includes deep learning and vision accelerators that can run multiple AI apps locally. Don't need the cloud. Orin purchases, purchasers get access to the Isaac Sim, Robot Sim app, Clara for imaging and genomics, Drive for autonomous vehicles. Obviously, you don't need all three, but you know, depending on your industry, you can pick one of those. Xavier costs you eleven hundred dollars. We don't know the price for Orin yet, but if you put Orin in a car, you compare it with the Nvidia Drive Concierge and Drive Chauffeur. Let's start with the Concierge. It combines voice assistance, driver monitoring, and autonomous parking. Every passenger can have their own instance of it. They'll recognize your voice. It can do things you'd expect, like play, place a phone call, book a reservation. It can also watch for things like if you left your phone in the seat and let you know as you're getting out of the car. Uh, it can encourage you to take a break if it looks like you're getting sleepy while you're driving. And it can park itself. You, you get out of the car, say, go to the parking space, you know, like the Tesla, it can go park itself. Uh, it can supposedly do parallel angled and perpendicular parking and come meet you when you summon it. If you were like, okay, what about chauffeur? A chauffeur is just the autonomous driving system. Uh, it can now go address to address autonomously in urban or highway situations. And all of that is part of Drive Hyperion 8, the autonomous platform that NVIDIA is marketing to automakers, which is now ready for production vehicles. No announcements on anyone who had adopted it as of yet, though. They've worked in the past with Volvo and I think BMW, but yeah, they didn't use those names today, did they? Interestingly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, this this is, I don't know, this seems impressive, but it's also, we're getting to be evolutionary, not revolutionary with this sort of thing, aren't we? I, I, yeah, I, I, you know, at the risk of sounding like me, uh, I, I, I want to see it actually in a product where I mm -hmm. can go to a dealership. Um, and I don't mean this in the sort of pandemic sense of we can't get chips for cars, but oh, right, in right. the normal sense of, you know, I, I want to like actually it's see it in action. Yeah. You know, you yeah, can go yeah, to the yeah. dealership and, and drive one. Um, I, I or, feel or fairly positive that in in NVIDIA has good uh, good software that that mm -hmm. will be used, but you're right. It, it would be better if we had heard the partnership. Uh, yeah, I did, know. and I I meant no slight against Nvidia yeah, yeah. or any of the other autonomous vehicle partnerships mm -hmm. that have been mentioned other elsewhere in the show. It's just literally it's one of those things where you know we're so close and we're so close and we're so close, you know. And I've been reading about Waymo and I've been reading about the local drivers, you know, in Arizona dealing with Waymo. And I've I've you know I've been in San you know in in the wee small hours of the morning when the cruise engineers were running around with those. And I'm, I'm just, you know, there's, there's ex Tesla employees talking about the quality or the actual stage of the autonomy. I just want to see some of this stuff actually, you know, and I, I think the other thing to note when you look at these NVIDIA announcements is this is NVIDIA pointing to its future, right? These right. aren't meant to be our product is out today. This is meant to be here's what we're capable of doing. If you're worried that someday, right. you know, GPUs will be, at, you know, come out from under us and we won't have anything left. We, we have all this AI stuff that we're doing, too. Yeah, and, and very much in, you know, and in, 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 in very it seems like very successfully and very. You know, this they're not playing catch up. They're they're definitely laying a lot of groundwork in a lot of directions. Just waiting to see some of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Specifically in the autonomous driving thing. I'm curious. A uh, couple, couple other quick announcements here. Audio to Face uh, is a product from NVIDIA that can match facial animations to audio files, keeping the mouth and lips in sync with the words. No mocap required. Yes. Uh, the quality depends on the audio file, and it's not meant to do facial emotions yet. So it's just one step towards that, uh, but it's available for download in an open beta if you want to mess around with it. Uh, and video is also partnering with Lockheed Martin, the US Forest Service and the Colorado Division of Fire Prevention and Control to build tools to better fight fires. Lockheed is providing the real-time sensing software, and NVIDIA provides the hardware and use of its Omniverse platform to do the forecasting. Basically, it can simulate fire spread under differing 
conditions, wind, weather, rain, you know, heat, whatever. Uh, the data can be visualized on a regular screen, just a 2D screen, but they'll also work in AR and VR if you want to do it that way. Uh, the tests have been fairly accurate. They didn't give any hard numbers, though, and they emphasize that they are continuing to refine this and they want to right. gain the trust of the firefighting community. They don't want, they're not trying to foist this on them. They want to work with the firefighting community to make this work for them. And then once they've got that, they want to make it widely available to everybody. Cool. Yeah. I liked that. I liked that very much that, that they didn't come out saying like, come on, everybody, use our revolutionary thing and fires are gone. They're like, <laughs> no, no, we're working with the people who know on the ground that this is harder than it looks and we want to make it right. Uh, so good for them. Absolutely. Google. Now, uh, I hope you have a picture of your cat or dog or reptile or bird or fish or <laughs> rabbit or horse ready because Google's Arts and Culture app has added a feature that lets you upload a picture of a dog, cat, fish, bird, reptile, horse, or rabbit, and it will look through pictures of art, you know, paintings, great works of art, to find similar pets in works of art. And then it, once you find them, you can tap on the art and learn more about the art. It's a great way to, you know, educate people about art. Uh, you can also share these on social media and even create a slideshow uh, of the results if you've got several good ones. Uh, my dog, uh, Ray, a German shepherd, was very unimaginatively <laughs> associated with Rin Tin Tin, <laughs> which I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, I guess most shepherds kind of look like Rin Tin Tin. Uh, but then uh, I, I thought there was a really good one from uh, my border collie, Sawyer, uh, who, who got pa uh, paired up with what looks like a border collie in a picture by Sir Edwin Landseer uh, from the mid-1800s. So I, I, that one worked for me, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Did you do Lupin? You know, I uh, I had trouble with Lupin because all of my recent Lupin pictures have involved Lupin in a uh, cone. Mm. And uh, Lupin's very sensitive about there that. There might be I, some great works of art with dogs and cones we, out there. We have, a, we have a new kitten, a small black kitten, and it came up with Jester Leonardo DiCatrio from the Art Pop Street Gallery and <laughs> the pet from the National Academy of Design, okay. the John Thomas Peel painting, which actually is, you know, outside of the fact that I am old and bearded and there's a cherubic child in a loose shift holding a black and white cat with a ribbon uh is is certainly very parallel and then the accuracy just falls yeah off yeah it falls off a cliff pretty fast <laughs> um i don't know but but it's fun and, and, it, and it promotes art education so i was i was into it this is cool stuff all right, let's check out the mailbag. Got an email from James C. Smith, one of our top supporters. Uh, we've been talking about how to explain the difference between Facebook and Meta and Google and Alphabet. It's two different things going on there. Uh, and James is like, comparing those two isn't much help. A useful comparison would be Xbox and Microsoft. So we we're talking about uh, Andrew's question of like, why did you say Meta stopped face facebook's facial recognition why didn't you say facebook did it because it was the product stopping it right uh and and james said this works uh xbox and microsoft because xbox and facebook are both more than just a product they're each a brand with many associated products and platforms but it's clear you shouldn't say or wouldn't say xbox removed connect support from the xbox series x it was microsoft who removed it and facebook didn't remove the facial recognition meta removed it. So maybe that will help in future discussions. I thought this was a good good comparison. It was a, it was a decent equivalency of Facebook is now just a product, a really big, successful product <laughs> that makes up a large amount of Meta's, uh, you know, uh, income. Uh, but like Xbox is a big, successful product, doesn't make up a large percentage of Microsoft's income, but a, a nice big chunk. Uh, right. So yeah, I, I think those are, I think those are somewhat equivalent. I I struggled. We were talking a good day internet about this, and I struggled a little bit because I still think that the eventual goal is to change the name of Facebook to Meta. But I also have a small. Mind I don't. I don't think so. I think they're going to yeah. leave Facebook as Facebook forever, and what they want to do is make you not think of Facebook when you think of the Quest or just any slowly. other products like the way like the Ray Ban stories. They just they they want to be like Facebook. Yeah, that's that thing we do. But nothing else is related to it. Come on, I, that's, that's really thing what you I used to do. But now you do Meta, yeah. just right. bigger. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> like Microsoft with Clippy. <laughs> well, we were feedback. all feedback. Just feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. How come everybody talks about Clippy and no one talks about Microsoft Bob? Bob was just because, as bad. 
Bob was worse. <laughs> that was worse. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. And, Feedback and, at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Uh, special thanks to Jeff Wilkes, one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS. Thank you for all the years of support, Jeff. We love thanking our, our longtime supporters who support us at a, at a top level. Uh, but if you're not supporting us and haven't supported us or, or haven't supported us in a while, uh, if you go to Patreon and join right now, you get your name in the show tomorrow. Thank you, Patrick Norton, for being with us today. Uh, before we get out of here, what, what do you got going on to tell folks about? Oh, my goodness. Uh, looking at some products for AVXL, uh, home theater and audio, a weekly podcast with Robert Heron. And if you have a uh, question about uh, screens or home theater gear or headphones or speakers or all that good stuff or music streaming, just email ask at avxl.com. Excellent. We are Thanks. live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Is that still correct with the Daylight Saving Time stretch? Find out more. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>